Hey, how you guys doing? So, I'm recording this January 1st. Happy New Year if you didn't get my New Year's message. All right, let's jump into it. Chat GPT, we're at version 3 now, but apparently the beta, I suppose you call it, is already being tested by people. Uh, Chat GPT 4. So I'm reading this article from thedecoder.com. I'm going to make my comments as I go through it. So uh, with Chat GPT, OpenAI is currently testing a dialogue-based general purpose language model. According to cognitive scientist Gary Marcus, Chat GPT is just a, a foretaste of Chat GPT 4. Rumors about GP4, GPT4 have been floating around the web for weeks, and they have two things in common. GPT4 is supposed to outperform GTP3 uh, significantly, and it will be released fairly soon in the spring, so it's coming along pretty quickly. OpenAI is currently running a joint grant program with Microsoft, whose participants likely already have access to chat GPT-4. Microsoft CTO Scott Stein recently predicted an even more significant AI year in 2023. So things are starting to accelerate. Um, I'm going to deal with the whole job issue, at least from my point of view. GPT-4 will blow minds. All right. Psychologist and cognitive scientist Gary Marcus is joining the GPT-4 frenzy, saying he knows several people who have already tested GPT-4. Quote, I guarantee that minds will be blown, writes Marcus, who is known as a critic of large language models, or more precisely, with their handling of everyday life. GPT-4, he said, will totally eclipse chat GPT. GPT-4, he said, will totally eclipse chat GPT and create even more buzz. Technically, Marcus expects that GPT-4 will offer more parameters and be trained with more data, a significant fraction of the internet as a whole. GPT-4 is going to be a monster, Marcus writes. Now, I've spoken to a few friends who are in the AI business, and a friend of mine is doing his PhD. I've done a little research on it. I'm not a, an AI guy by any means. I'm a software developer. I've been doing this since 93, or is it 94? 94. One of the most important things in an AI is the data set that they are working on. And based on what I've read and people I've spoken to, it has to do with being able to select the data set properly, to filter it, pre-filter it, if you will, so that the AI can consume good stuff. It's kind of like eating good food. I don't know. This is a conversation I had with people a little while back. I'm not sure how chat, uh, well, excuse me, how GPT-4 uh, works with all of this. But um, anyway, that's just something to keep in mind. So... You know, the better the data being fed to the AI, the better the AI as a general rule. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Marcus is an advocate of hybrid AI systems that combine deep learning with pre-programmed rules. In his view, scaling large language models is only part of the solution on the road to artificial general intelligence. He expects AI, he expects the AI industry to increasingly move towards this hybrid approach in the coming years, citing Meta's Diplomacy AI as a positive example. So, question that they put in this article. Chat GPT as a Google killer. Here comes another counter-argument. Meanwhile, Twitter points out another challenge with using large language models as search engines. Who is responsible for the results? When a search engine outputs a list of web pages, the operator's of the web pages are essentially responsible for the content on their page. But what if Chat GPT, a product of OpenAI, of OpenAI, generates all the content? Hmm. I'll link to the article before. It's at the-decoder.com. The title of the article: Chat GPT is just a taste of a quote monster. GPT-4 says Gary Marcus. This was published a few days ago. Playing around with uh, Chat GPT recently. It's, it's very cool. It's, it's uh, AI++. It's Google++. So it's clear that it's grabbing its information from other sources. It's not really thinking. It's just grabbing and massaging information and presenting it to you in a more human, easy way to comprehend, if you will, or to consume. So I'm curious to see what the GPT-4 will do. 
In the article, there's a bit of a discussion about whether a chat GPT will be able to re replace Google search anytime soon. So in the article, they're not convinced that it will. I'll just read. I'm skeptical that a system like chat GPT will, will be able to replace Google search anytime soon. Even though Google is supposedly sounding the alarm bells, I think it is more likely that verified AI answers will be added to existing search. Yeah, you know, when I was playing with chat GPT, I was uh, asking some basic questions and you can see it was, it was clear that it was just drawing information from various websites. And I found it more efficient to draw that information many times just from Google. Because it would, it, would, it, would, it would wrap the information in a conversational way of uh, expressing it. And it was just slow. Whereas Google can go click and boop, and it would appear for me. So, you know, as I've been saying for a long time, I see AI as a powerful new way to assist in current processes. So as it relates to developers, it's not going to replace developers, especially when it comes to building actual real world systems, yes, I can see sooner than later uh, a ch an AI bot being able to, you point at a piece of code, say optimize this algorithm or write an algorithm that does X, Y, and Z and it will do that. People who know my channel know that I'm not a big believer in testing for algorithms and data structure knowledge. I think that's a silly waste of time for the most part, uh, for 99% of programming, that's such a specialized thing. That said, I think that's the first thing to go, as I mentioned in recent videos, in terms of AI, because it's such a fine-grained thing. It's uh, much easier to train an AI to do something very specialized like that, like optimize this, uh, this algorithm here, for example. Whereas in real-world development, it's really, uh, a developer's job is to put together requirements based on a disparate set of variables, and then be able to select technologies A, B, C, and D, and put it all together, AI are not gonna be able to replace this for a long, long time. How do I know? Because they've been working on just an AI to drive a car, and they're making progress, but driving a car and not running into a cat or a tree or something, that's really easy compared to building a system. And they still haven't mastered the car not driving into a cat, right? So you got to not get super excited about the, uh, well, excited mean fearful about chatbots and AI replacing developers. Yes, the game will shift. And there's no question about it. If I were uh, a copywriter, if I was a reporter, if I was an, uh, a bookkeeper, an accountant, that kind of stuff, a lawyer, low-level lawyer who's just uh, filling in documents for people, I would be concerned. Uh, that within the next you know, five years or so, who knows? I, 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 say, I say sooner than later, that is something that's going to be encroached upon. But you're still going to need lawyers and accountants to look over things. Uh, I think it was the founder of OpenAI, one of the top principles as cited in this article. He said that AI is still not perfect and it will make a lot of subtle Make, it will make subtle mistakes that it will take an expert to spot. So I can see, again, chat, uh, GPT, and other AI tools as a good way to quickly uh, create boilerplate code if you're in development, meaning just get the structure in place based on your requirement. It's still going to require a highly experienced developer slash coder to put it all together. In conclusion, I think that uh, if you're a full stack developer, general purpose developer, those jobs are gonna be the last to go in the development field. I hope this is interesting. It's uh, quite a lot of fun, this uh, AI stuff, I have to say. All right, my name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I run a mentoring program at unclesteph.com. I train total beginners and even CTOs in the ways of code and code in business. I've been doing this since 1994, so I'm essentially transferring my decades of experience to you guys in a very short period of time. Work at your own pace, a lot of fun. All right, we'll talk soon, bye.